welcome to Chesapeake Weekly Home Edition. The November election is just three weeks away and the next deadline to consider is for absentee ballots. So if you're planning to vote absentee, pay close attention. You must request your ballot by Friday, October 23rd in order to receive it in the mail. They'll mail the ballot to your house, you'll fill it out, and then you can either mail it back to the voter registrar's office bring it to the drop box that's right outside their building. You can easily drive right up to it, or you can bring it to any of the satellite voting locations whenever they're open. Request your absentee ballot by visiting elections.virginia.gov or get your application at the voter registrar's office. Well, if 2020 hasn't been scary enough for all of us, here comes Halloween. Now, this year, your traditions might take a bit of a turn. Um, remember that COVID-19 is still a very, very real concern. So I've heard a lot of people coming up with some new ways of doing things. Like instead of going trick or treating, doing a scavenger hunt in the backyard. And instead of opening up your door to hand candy out to kids, setting up a table at the end of the driveway with candy scattered out. Or even some really, really unique people have created candy shoots, which is super fun and crafty if you're into that. So. If you're going to choose to participate in trigger treating, there are absolutely some safety tips that you need to keep in mind. So let's go over them. Wear a cloth mask. Costume masks might have holes in them. They might not fit snugly over the mouth and nose. They just won't provide the necessary protection. So keep those cloth masks on. Wash your hands before and after trick or treating and use antibacterial. Bring that with you to use in between each stop. Only go out with those who already live in your household. So avoid crowds and make sure that you can continue to maintain that six feet of physical distancing between your group and others. You know, don't allow children to rush up to houses that may already have a group waiting for candy. Wait your turn and maintain that distance. And finally, if you or anyone in your household is feeling sick or has been around someone who has been sick, do not go trick or treating. Speaking of safety tips, there is an upcoming virtual workshop for seniors on fire safety. On Wednesday, October 21st at 1 p.m., the workshop will take place via Zoom. The Chesapeake Task Force on Aging, Chesapeake 55 Plus, and the Chesapeake Triad Salt Council are all working together with the Chesapeake Fire Department to host this free workshop. Topics will include smoke alarm information, kitchen safety, escape routes, and more. If you're a senior citizen or you care for one, this is a great opportunity available very easily via Zoom. Registration is required and you can do that online at eventbrite.com. Just search fire safety for seniors or call 757-382-2268 for more information. Well, with the delightful fall weather we're experiencing now, getting outside is a great activity to keep from being all cooped up indoors. And if biking is a favorite pastime for you, we've got a few safety tips to keep you safe while traveling the city on two wheels. Well, generally in the city of Chesapeake, we got a lot of areas where there's you know open spaces for you to ride your bicycles. And if you're riding in the road, you always want to stay to the right and ride with the flow of traffic. You don't want to ride against traffic. That's very unsafe and people don't look in that direction when they're pulling out in front of you. So you always wanna ride with traffic. If you're riding at nighttime, you wanna make sure that you have a set of operational lights, both front and back. It makes it a lot easier for you to be seen and also you wanna wear bright clothing. And make sure that you have good control over your bike at all times. Obey the rules of the road. A helmet is definitely recommended equipment. Um, it's not state law, but you want to have a helmet on and you don't want your helmet to be more than five years old. If your helmet's more than five years old, the styrofoam kind of loses its texture and becomes more brittle. Just be respectful and mindful of everyone that you're uh, on the road with, whether they're cyclists or drivers. Another great outdoor activity combines technology with nature. It's geocaching. And you really might be surprised what kind of treasures you'll find deep within our parks. Take a look. Hi, I'm Ranger Carter, and uh, today we're gonna talk about one of my favorite pastimes, that is geocaching. It's a, a worldwide treasure hunt. What you do is you follow coordinates that can be found on the geocaching.com website, or you can download the app and you can check your area that you're in and you can actually see where these coordinates are plotted. And at the end of these coordinates could be a geocache. 
So today we're going to go around and try to find some of these mysterious items that I'm talking about that have been hidden by uh, geocachers out there. Uh, geocachers are just regular people, just like you and me, who uh, have decided to play a really complex, fun, and adventurous game. So let's go. Let's go see what we can find. You're going to need appropriate clothing, closed-toed shoes, and bug spray. Oh, hello there. We're at our first geocache. And from the looks of it, it appears that we're about 109 feet away from something really, really special. Now, we're gonna head on over there, but remember while you're out geocaching, you should try to wear clothes that are appropriate, that will cover you up, keep you nice and safe. And you also wanna watch out for dangerous plants and animals. Always be aware of your surrounding while you're out here having a good time geocaching. And remember, even though I'm really close, I wanna be super safe and be aware of my surroundings. And here he is. The Bigfoot of Northwest River Park. I mean, I actually made this cache, but every time I come here, I'm always excited to see what other people have left inside. Um, but here, right here, you'll see there's a lot. And some caches have like clues in, in the cache or on the description on how to get to it. So if I go to, this is the name of the geocache right here. It's Bigfoot sighting. But if I scroll down some and I'm having a hard time getting in it, like I don't know how to get past this lock. If you hit the hint, it will say, it'll give you some kind of clue as to how to get into the cache. Also, when you look at the geocaches, clues can be also found in the description of the cache. So if I hit the description button, it has a story about it. And I do believe the clue, there can be a clue inside of here too. But if you hear, I actually put up here, look out for snakes, poison ivy, skunk apes, skeeters, spiders, thorny vines, just things to be aware of in the environment. <laughs> so without any further ado, let's go ahead and uh, open this up. Okay, we're ready. Looks like there's some rocks. <laughs> hey, Luigi. Luigi throwing a fireball. It's like a squishy. Some rocks. Normally I take the pot rocks out of here because I like to paint them. And weird little coin, little, little goblin on it. Hey, K9 Murphy. Some flashlights. Look at that. Now remember, whenever you come to a geocache, uh, when you take it out, you want to put something in there of equal or greater value. We have the log, the log book right here. And this is where people sign to prove that they found it. You open that up. You can see other geocachers who have come here and signed the log book. It's pretty cool. Quite a few people have found it. I'll put that back in there for the next people to find. And that is the Sasquatch cache. Bigfoot sighting at Northwest River Park. Okay, so we're at our last geocache for the day. Uh, yeah, it's been so fun so far. I can geocache forever, but all good things must come to an end and we're gonna go out with a bang on this one. I actually see this last geocache. This one's called the Northern Bear Cub. It's a kid's cache. Uh, so it's not too hard for like the little ones to come out and come check out. Uh, so we're gonna go on over here. official geocache and your geocaches will normally have some kind of marking on them like that to let people know that it's an official game piece but let's go ahead and crack this baby open see what we have in here oh there it was right there northern bear cub oh wow there's all sorts of stuff in this one we have our log book we're totally signing that one i haven't found this one yet oh is this toilet paper? Oh, condensed toilet paper. <laughs> nice, you never know, it's useful. Pig thingy. <laughs> Your friend, Professor Monkey. Girl with the race car, she's got race cars for shoes. Amazing. Oh yeah, a little. <laughs> so cool. 
there's all sorts of stuff in here. And if you want to come out and maybe find some of these yourself, just download the geocaching.com app or just go onto the main website and they'll get you started there. This is really cool. I really want to keep this, but I'm gonna leave it. Not only am I gonna leave it, but I'm gonna leave something else in here. Let's put this stuff back and we're going to leave some official park ranger stickers. Oh yeah, come on, come get them. They're worth like five million dollars a piece. Yep, I'm, that's, I know it's insane. I'm gonna leave two of them, that's even crazier. Boom, so if you wanna come out and find this, like I said, just download the geocaching.com app. It's not official until you sign the log. When you go to geocaching.com and you make your account, you can actually make your own geocaching name. Mine's really silly. You ready for it? It's Good Goblin. I don't know, it just, it sounded funny to me. Good Goblin, that's me. So now I can look at other people who've been here. PA lady, I know her, bike a lot. I've seen her before. You'll actually start to notice other geocachers in the, that are in your area too. A lot of fun. And also make sure that you put the right day where you found it. You can see other people have done the same. So we were just at the Northern Bear Cub. When you pull up the site for geocaching, when you want to log that you found it, you go ahead and find it in, on the map, which we're right here. And you simply just hit log. And you can either put that, sometimes people uh, damage or take the cash uh, that's unfortunate but it happens uh, but if it's still there and you found it you can go ahead and simply hit found it and then you can just type something quickly in there I like to put thanks for the hunt some people put T F T uh, F instead thanks for the find but I like to put thanks for the hunt and then you post it and normally what I like to do is uh, instead of just putting putting that up there I like to put you know like a quick uh, description of my adventure finding the cash like I'm just here with my family and friends for the day and we're from this area and we were excited to find this and we left this inside of the cash uh, you might have seen uh, I actually put some park ranger stickers in that cash when you put things in the cache and when you take them out, the rule of thumb is when you take something to cat from the cache, you have to put something of equal or more value inside of the cache. Uh, that's part of geocaching etiquette. It's like the number one rule. So um, when you're out there, make sure if you do take something, make sure you put something in there in its place. Thanks for joining me. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put this back where I found it and make sure you guys stay alert and be safe while you're out there geocaching. Have fun. And finally, if history is your thing, there is plenty of that to come by here in Chesapeake. The park over by the Great Bridge Bridge, Battlefield Park, is a great opportunity to get in some learning while also a little bit of physical activity. So you can enjoy an outdoor interpretive historic pathway and a recreation of the causeway from 1775. Plus, there's a wonderful trail through the woods. That's one of my favorite places to go walking. Then if you want to dive a little deeper into our history, the museum is open for visitors. Don't just learn history, live history. At the Great Bridge Battlefield and Waterways Museum, you'll experience life in 18th century Virginia. Discover the water that defined the landscape. Visit a colonial tavern, and find yourself in the middle of the Battle of Great Bridge. Your next adventure begins at the Great Bridge Battlefield and Waterways Museum. All COVID-19 safety precautions apply. Go to gbbattlefield.org for more information. That's all we've got for this week. Everyone have a great week, stay healthy, and we'll see you right here again next week.